All right, so this is potential tropical cyclone one briefing as of 10.30 a.m. this morning. Uh, changes with this briefing from yesterday, although not from this morning's email if you received it, is that we now have warnings in effect for tropical storm winds and for coastal flooding, which is flooding on the beach. So here's the overview. It is PTC1 is formed in the Bay of Campeche. It is poorly organized, but it is trying to get organized right now. Uh, most of the impacts will be well north of the center. So we'll remind you often again, don't focus on the cone and the track. It's the impacts that we're concerned about. Time of the impacts begins today um, with some isolated to scattered showers, but really peaks from overnight tonight through Thursday and recedes gradually thereafter. And here are the main impacts, and these will be repeated often during this presentation. Local and minor flooding at poor drainage locations where rainfall rates over short periods of time are high. For example, two inches per hour for two or three hours, that's going to cause a flood, maybe a foot, two, even three feet of water in poor drainage locations, no matter how well we've prepared for it. It's just too much rain to handle in a short period of time. Uh, Seawater covering the barrier island beaches beginning late tonight uh, and through Thursday with water into the dunes at high tides early Wednesday and early Thursday. In fact, water depth could reach up to three feet along the beaches in a reasonable worst case scenario, as well as at unprotected areas of Port Isabel and Port Mansfield. Right now we're forecasting about two to maybe two and a half feet above, above expected values, but a reasonable worst case scenario could be more given the long fetch and consistency of the fetch of water coming in for three days here. A dangerous waves, the strong winds for boaters on the Gulf of Laguna Madre with potentially deadly rip currents that have already begun today through Thursday. In fact, we're already looking at the beach cams. We think there's six foot waves out there now. Those will build to 12 feet by the afternoon and evening. Um, we are seeing water covering the beach at high tide this morning. That will recede a little bit this afternoon with less beach available than we had over the weekend by far. And then the beach will be covered in water overnight tonight all the way through Thursday. So here's a quick look at the hazards. I'll just go over these briefly. Um, wind is minor damage to unfastened lightweight objects near the coast with neighborhood level power outages possible, meaning isolated. The main areas will be the Barrier Island and Bayside communities such as Port Isabel, Laguna Heights, Laguna Vista, Port Mansfield, but could extend farther inland into Cameron and Willacy County towards the expressway, including the bigger cities if squalls are stronger. And that remains a bit unknown right now, but something to be prepared for for Wednesday and again Thursday morning. Um, storm surge, we mentioned that. There's not a true surge, but there is a tidal run-up. We've already seen that this morning. And uh, two feet of water plus wave action will run into the dunes, and that is going to be on the beach. But also we'll be worried about dock sides on the bay side of both South Padre Island, as well as the Port Isabel and Port Mansfield area. So be aware of that. And if you have boats, fasten them tightly uh, because it's not a good time to go out. A flooding rainfall, we mentioned that the reasonable worst case scenario could be three feet in persistent bands in poorly drainage areas. As we mentioned, the urban areas of the valley, as well as some of the ranch communities, such as Hebronville and Falfortius, where we expect a little bit more rain to fall. Peak timing once again, overnight tonight through Thursday. We've added a very low chance of a spin-up tornado um, occurring on these feeder bands that come in a well north of the center. That could be anywhere in the valley or deep south Texas, and that would be uh, Wednesday through even Friday. So we don't want to leave Friday out, even though the system will be dissipated by then, we'll still be in that circulation around it. And as we saw with Hurricane Alex in 2010, it was a day and a half later that we had a, an EF1 90 mile per hour tornado in Hebronville. So we don't want to limit, uh, we don't want to not mention Friday here. And Marine is obvious, it's already getting bad out there. We've got seas 10 feet uh, with some wind wave on top of it. Swells are already up to 10 feet. We expect those seas to increase over 13 feet and the swells go to 13 to 16 seconds. And that's what's going to pound the waves onto the beach. So really not a good time to go out for small craft. And that will really be a maximized from 1 a.m. or midnight tonight uh, on through Thursday. So here's your hazards in a nutshell. Um, wind and surge, not too impactful beyond the beaches and the coastal communities. So it is an elevated threat, but not a high or medium threat. Flooding rain, though, is a medium threat, so we are concerned about that, especially in those feeder bands. No issues for rivers. Uh, Rio Grande needs a lot more water to have a problem. Tornadoes, again, we've elevated that threat, but marine is the significant to extreme threat here. 
with the high seas, the strong wind waves, the, the strong winds that could be up to 40 to 50 miles per hour sustained, as well as torrential rains from time to time. It just is not a time for any boaters to go out. And even shippers should really be aware of what's out there. Maybe try to avoid our area for the next couple of days before thinking about coming into the port. This also includes Mexican shrimping vessels. It would not surprise us to see dozens of them come into port in the Port of Brownsville. So if you are from the Port of Brownsville or work there, be aware of that, that that could happen tonight and tomorrow morning before things really pick up. So here's our latest for PTC-1, um, now located in the uh, central part of the southwestern Gulf, west of the Yucatan Peninsula. Um, it is now moving north, but quickly expected to turn to the west and accelerate as we get into the overnight period, and especially during the day on Wednesday. Still expected to make landfall between La Pesca and Tampico. Uh, there are tropical storm warnings out for a lot of the Texas coast from uh, near Port, I think it's uh, Freeport, all the way down through the mouth of Rio Grande, and then in basically all of the Tamaulipas coast for those of you who work with the Mexican counterparts. Uh, we have a coastal flood warning. We'll mention the surge situation based on the tidal run-up in the next few slides. But here's a big note at the problem do, at the bottom. Do not focus on the track and cone, which is well to the south. Focus on the impacts, which will be well to the north. And we're going to go over them now. So here's the circulation. Uh, this is known as an atmospheric gyre or a broad circulation that originally originated in Central America has now moved its way into the Gulf. And you can see it covers the entire western Gulf of Mexico. The X is where the center is estimated to be this morning, maybe a bit farther north since I put this uh, together. But you can see a lot of the impact zone in this cloud mass well to the north and west of the center. And that will be the story as we move forward in time into Wednesday and Thursday. So your radar this morning is pretty quiet. There's actually nothing out there except for a few uh, quick hitting showers across the Jim Hogg and Brooks County area. But the atmosphere is quite unstable and we expect scattered showers and perhaps a thunderstorm developing soon. And uh, between 11 and 2 p.m. over the lower mid valley. And then any of these showers that last less than 20 minutes. So we are not repeat, not expecting flooding rain today. So as mentioned at the bottom here, last minute preparedness for this rain can be done today you will not have the time to do that when we get into the overnight and especially on Wednesday into Thursday. So your wind threat right now, we have the potential for minor damage to unfastened lightweight objects in the barrier island and base high communities shown on the map here uh, from 1 a.m. Wednesday through Thursday during the day, mainly during stronger rain bands and squalls. We mentioned earlier isolated power outages are possible, but stronger squalls could reach farther inland, especially in Cameron and Willie C County and could cause similar impacts to what we're currently expecting on the coast. So be aware if you're on the interstate I-69E up towards US-77 from Sarita to Raymondville to Harlingen to Brownsville and locations in between, um, we could see some impact there too. Again, nothing major, but just something to keep your, your eye on in case we do have some of those isolated power outages and minor damage. So trampolines, tents, fences. Today's a good day to kind of tighten those down just to be on the safe side. So here's the tropical storm wind speed probabilities. And what you'll notice is there's very low probabilities for all of deep south Texas in the valley. However, the main wind fields are well to the north. In fact, over 350 miles to the north, which includes the entire Texas coast. So it is not shown by these probabilities per se, but if you look at the winds between high pressure and I'm looking at pony wind miles to over places like Georgia, Alabama, all the way to the low pressure that's here that's not named yet, that gradient or difference between those winds is what's producing the strong winds in the Gulf now, and those squalls will bring them well north of the center. So we think the probability of occurrence is well above 50%, for those kind of winds in the difference between the high and low pressure. And again, repeating the time frame could arrive as early as 1 a.m. tomorrow morning and continue um, across the region, especially the area um, east of I-69 East US-77 uh, in the morning. So the time frame here, we're looking at the action to start uh, really overnight uh, in the Gulf, moving onshore overnight and then reaching into the interior parts of Cameron, Willisie, Kennedy County by mid-morning, and then across the rest of the valley in deep south Texas by late morning to early afternoon, both tomorrow and on Thursday. So this is a 50-knot wind speed probability. The numbers are very low, so we're not going to address this now. The current forecast has remained pretty much intact for keeping a very small chance of 58-mile-per-hour winds, which could cause a lot more damage. If this changes, we'll obviously update 
in future slide presentations. So the earliest reasonable time uh, arrival of the tropical storm force winds for the lower Texas coast remains the same as we had yesterday, um, early tomorrow morning. And the most likely time of arrival is going to be tomorrow morning through early to mid afternoon. Again, don't really focus on the area here, more focus on the lines as these uh, time frames allow, which is when the stronger winds will be coming in with the difference between the high pressure and the current PTC-1. As far as storm surge, we're not forecasting a true surge in this case, but we are forecasting above average tides. We already saw that this morning. If you look at the, the webcams at South Padre Island, we are already flooding the beach, but it's not getting into the dunes yet. But that will change overnight. A reasonable high set scenario is 2.5 to, to, to 3 feet above what's considered normal conditions or normally high water conditions which means that it'll roll in with waves on the beach and that could cause an issue with the dunes and maybe some minor damage to any leftover items that are out there. So all those should be stowed behind the dunes. If not already, they should be done. But other things we concern about with the higher tides are bayside docks and boat ramps um, that are in existence from the east side of Highway 48 to places like Port Isabel, uh, Laguna Heights, Laguna Vista, and definitely the west side, Laguna side of South Padre Island. And, and also, don't want to forget about Port Mansfield. They're going to be in the impact zone as well. There's your peak storm surge forecast. Our bigger concern in the state is from Sargent up to Sabine Pass, including Houston Galveston Bay. Uh, but we're all at one to three feet, which is in the range that we mentioned. So this information is available at hurricanes.gov under the PTC1 uh, discussion area. Our main concern, as we mentioned on land, is flooding rain threat. We have a moderate threat for inland flooding, and that means that as we get farther into the upper valley, Star County, Southern Jim Hogg, Southern Zapata, uh, we could see swift currents and even some overspill of arroyos, which are now dry. They're now actually completely dry. But the rains we're forecasting, particularly on Thursday, but even beginning tomorrow afternoon out there, could start to run them. So while they may not go over their banks, anyone playing near the arroyos and falling in could see fast water, and that could cause a real problem for people nearby. Um, otherwise, we can see floodwaters entering structures in a reasonable worst case scenario. If we start talking about three feet of water in poor drainage areas that could enter structures, and then we could see rapid inundation at underpasses, low-lying spots, and poor drainage areas. We say that before. Uh, the frontage road, the underpasses, those could be flooded out. We've seen this in the past, but hopefully drainage projects have improved that, but it may not be the case in all instances along both of our interstates here in the lower and mid-valley. So be aware of that when the rain starts falling hard later tonight through Thursday. <clears throat> we have a slight risk for widespread flooding, uh, both Wednesday and Thursday. Um, don't worry about the terminology. Basically, what's said on the last slide is what slight risk is all about, and it covers the entire region of deep south Texas in the valley uh, each day. So here's the rainfall potential. You ask about numbers. We do have them. These are the general broad brush numbers for the region. We're looking generally at four to six inches across the entire area with a pocket of six to eight inches that goes into the coastal bend and coastal plains from Kennedy and Brooks County northward. Uh, here's the map that shows that locally on the upper right. And then we're really highlighting Wednesday as the key day for this. But let's not forget about Thursday. We could still see locally three or four inches in heavier bands on Thursday as well before things begin to wind down more on Friday with more unsettled showers versus persistent showers. Potential tornado impacts, we don't want to rule it out. We have most of the valley and the deep south Texas brush country involved here. The Rio Grande Plains not quite in it yet, but we'll see that could expand westward um, in time. But if any tornadoes do form, they would be weak, EF0, but they could produce winds over 65 miles per hour, which is hurricane force. If they occur in, in a location such as a Colonia, we could have high impact. We're not talking about Laguna Heights here. We're not talking that strong of a tornado, but we are talking more of the typical windstorm damage we've seen in many surveys that we've done. So again, if it goes over a Colonia that's not well built or meaning a lot of substandard structures, we could have issues with these weak spin up tornadoes if they occur. Again, time frame mainly Wednesday and Thursday morning, perhaps as early as pre-dawn, more likely during the morning through the early afternoon for the tornado threat period. So the takeaways to finish off here, strong wind gusts expected mainly along the barrier island and coastal communities of these three counties and the coast, but potentially in squalls going towards the bigger cities of Brownsville, Harlingen, and Raymondville. Coastal flooding expected on the beach. We've already seen minor flooding this morning. It'll get worse uh, peaking tonight 
uh, and early tomorrow morning, roughly between uh, 3 a.m. and 9 a.m. tomorrow, and 4 a.m. and 10 a.m. on Thursday with the water into the dunes. Rainfall flooding is likely in poor, very poor drainage, urban locations of the valley and possibly across the ranch towns where the heavier rainfall occurs. So if the bands don't set up there, the rainfall will be welcome. We desperately need water and we're going to get it, but too much too soon can cause flooding. So this is a good news, bad news type of forecast. We mentioned the tornado cannot be ruled out and number one hazard for the coast and coastline and the water is the marine conditions. We already have rough and high seas are going to get worse. Gale force winds, meaning tropical storm force winds, are expected as we move farther in time with all the worst conditions over the waters peaking at the same time as we've been talking about land later tonight through midday or afternoon Thursday. And with that, our next briefing will be at 4.30 p.m., but we're planning to do it by email unless things dramatically change, then we can ramp up a quick webinar. There's all our information, and I'm going to end the slide deck now. And we will now stop the recording and answer any 